What's the name of your business? Bevin's Books. We're in Normal, Illinois. And what all you got going on here? Today at the booth we've got uh, our selection of vintage and modern Dungeons and Dragons. A little bit of Magic the Gathering. Some of the dice trays and dice boxes we make in-house for all the gamers that come in. And we've got a selection of our uh, science fiction fantasy books that we carry. We carry used and new books and, books and games. Have you had very much business so far? Here today? Yeah. A um, little bit today. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very sharp. Cannot steal. Mind if I give you guys a shout out on our YouTube channel? Sure, go ahead. What's the name of your business? Caps Perlis Games and Books in Carbondale, Illinois. And what all you got going on here? We have RPG stuff, miniatures, uh, including old Warhammer figures. Uh, we have dice, of all different kinds, card against humanity, tabletop games, uh, play mats, old games. We've got uh, Armada. If you can name it, we probably have it. Well, How long have you been doing this? The cons or in business? Both. In business, uh, 28 years now, and cons, probably just as long. Been staying pretty busy at the convention this year? Yeah, I've been pretty good. Thanks a lot. No problem. Have a good day. Mind if I uh, give you a shout out on our YouTube channel? Hell yeah, let's do it. Right. <laughs> What's the name of your business? Uh, Rider Monkey Games. All right, and what all you got going on here? Uh, well, what you see on display here is my first card game, Office Dungeon, Quest for Promotion. Uh, made for two to four players. I premiered it here last year at Hero of God. Okay. And uh, tell us a little bit about the game. Well, it's for two to four players. You pick your starting job, so intern, accountant, mail dude, administrative assistant, and the goal is to collect the uh, most amount of promotion points by the end of the game. Now, you can spend those promotion points on either a monster companion, or equipment, or items to help you on your way. The game ends once you make it through the entire deck, or you defeat the required number of bosses. Which are actual bosses. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of like Angry Bosses the game. Kind of. Yeah, okay. Kind of. Cool. And how long, uh, you, so you created this? Or? Yes, sir. How long have you been doing this? Uh, a year and three months. A year and three months. <laughs> so what gave you the idea to create this game? Uh, I spent way too much time working in an office and uh, one of my artistic inspirations passed away last year and I kind of started to do something just to honor him. Who was your... Uh... Uh, Monty Oom, an oh, okay. animator. Okay. Very cool. Let me get a shot of your logo here. Let me just get that out of your way. Do you have a website or Facebook page? Sure do. Uh, Rider Monkey Games on Facebook. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon. <laughs> And a much more abbreviated version for Twitter. Right on. So that's Rider Monkey Games. Yep. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Mind if I uh, give you guys a shout out on YouTube? Sure. All right. What's the name of your business? Sorry, I don't have a business. It's just Gene Raby. It's what? Gene Raby. Oh, Gene Raby? Okay. It's not a business. Okay. What all you got going on here? I'm just selling my books. Your books, okay. What kind of books you got here? You got some... I write science fiction and fantasy and adventure books. Oh, okay. So, so you actually wrote these? All of them. Oh, that's great. Do you have a uh, Facebook page or website? I do. We have a website. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what some of your books are about? Like, I know you said science fiction, fantasy, but... I've done a lot of stuff with dragons and giants. 
okay. I guess traditional high fantasy. And lately I've been getting into urban fantasies and mysteries because I've been looking for something a little bit different to do because I've written fantasies for so many years. Okay. I like stuff like that. Very cool. So let's uh, get a little bit of some of your books here. You got Cauldron. Lots of good books. <laughs> Is this just a uh, alternate cover, or is it like a sequel? Uh, so I, I pulled it from the first publisher and okay. took it to another one. Oh, okay. So Kevin J. Anderson, uh, Wordfire Press, has printed my latest three books. Oh, okay. Kevin's great. And can people find your books on your website here? Yeah, they can find it on the website or Amazon, bookstores. Great. The thanks old stuff on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot. You bet. Thank you. We've got um, the ones we were selling, like, we gave the people in the back already rolled up so you don't have to worry about getting damaged. Mm -hmm. um, we've got nice. several of them. How you doing over here, Amber? <laughs> <laughs> All the necklaces are ten dollars. The keychains are seven. These are three. Okay. These over here. These are three. Uh, just this. This rack is three. Okay. And then the rest are seven. I think I might have to get one of those Green Lantern ones. <laughs> John said the same thing. <laughs> sure, you don't want an Aquaman? <laughs> Screw Aquaman. <laughs> Got some greens and stuff on the side too. You know what? So how much business have you had so far here? Uh, yesterday we had a decent amount. So far today it's still early, so we'll see. I've been seeing a lot of people come down here, so. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your cosplay. I am Charlene from Street Fighter. I would have the bracelets, but they don't allow weapons here, so I can't wear my giant spikes. Um, but I've got good old hips. <laughs> so did you make the costume yourself, or did you just kind of... Yeah, I made bits and pieces of it, but I didn't make the actual silk portion. Oh, okay. I wish I could sew this good. <laughs> cool. Mind if I give you guys a shout out on YouTube? Oh, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what you got going on here? We are a small independent publisher from Springfield, Illinois. We specialize in Victorian fantasy, science fiction, and other forms of literature. Things that have been out of print for decades, some of it over a hundred years. Uh, we've got the progenitor of space opera here. Uh, across the Zodiac is sort of the granddad of John Carter of Mars. Okay. And uh, over here we have some Airship and Warfare by George Griffith. Some H.G. Wells. Yeah, you know, not a lot of people know that Wells sort of wrote the book on tabletop gaming. Okay. And he had two volumes that uh, in detail the rules that he used for a game he played with his children. And it is uh, male compatriots, actually, in a social setting. And uh, we rolled them into one coffee table sized paperback here That's cool. with his original illustrations and photos. And the guidelines he laid down for his gameplay. That's great. How much is that? That's a five dollar book. I may have to buy that from my father in law. Let me actually go ahead and. So we both write as well, and my wife's put together this anthology of dystopian and utopian fiction from the Victorian era. My westerns are down there. They're about an Illinois farmer who finds himself embroiled in the Underground Railroad. Oh, okay. It's a bell <laughs>
He's a second generation Illinois pioneer who, uh, whose sister gets murdered by uh, slave catchers and he finds himself taking up her torch and uh, leading a runaway to freedom and his journey sort of transforms him. Very cool. By the American Winston Churchill, uh, who often gets confused with the British. He was an extremely popular author around 1900. He was from St. Louis. He knew the British Churchill, actually. Uh, he has uh, two uh, novels dealing with the American Revolution, and uh, this one uh, deals with the Civil War, and Abraham Lincoln figures very prominently. And these are the two uh, airship warfare novels uh, that John spoke of earlier. Uh, they were written in 1893 and 1894. Uh, this one takes place in, uh, starts in the year 2030, and it's a sequel to this one. Okay. Very cool. All right, what have you got going on here? All right, I am Jessica Mates with Boxes to Dice For. I currently sell hand-painted and hand-carved dice boxes. They range anywhere from eight to about sixty-five dollars for my more advanced pieces. Um, all of these have been hand-painted. Some of the items have been hand-carved using a combination of wood carving tools and the model. Um, I also carry some small sets of dice. So I've got sets of polyhedral dice that I run for a random set of dice, five dollars. So if there's anything you see that you like that's here on my table or in my portfolio here on the table, um, by all means check it out, give me a shout out, and, um, and is this... feel free to commission me. And then that there, so this is an advertisement for Ether RPG. It's something a friend of mine put together. He's been working on this for five years. As of this morning on Kickstarter, they are 71% funded. They've got about two weeks left. Um, for one of the books you can get in. I know for the full set of books it's like about $125 and that gets you three hardcover books. I want to say it's about $50 for just the core rule book. Um, he also does have promotional tiers on there and again this is on kickstarter.com. This QR code gets you right to the Kickstarter page. Um, and then is this your business card? And that's my business card right there. So that's got my... If I give you guys a shout out on YouTube? That would be fine. Right, what we got going on here? Um, I'm Mariana from D20 Stitchery. I have various handmade dice bags that also work for game cartridges and sewing notions that open into dice trays. I like to do a lot of handmade stitch geek theme items. And I also work with a lot of local artists in Champaign that do different stained glass projects. I like that Captain America. Thank you very much. That's a fused glass piece that my friend did. That's a nice little fifth level. Superman. Yes. And the box in front of you, the dragon box, the wings do open up. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> so how long have you been doing this? I only started in October of last year, so I'm still relatively new to this. This is my third convention so far, and I'm really enjoying it. I definitely want to come back next year. <laughs> And D20 History is on um, both Facebook and Etsy, and that's where you'll find the dice bags and okay. um, a lot of these uh, cross-stitch cross -stitch projects and so forth, a lot of the stuff that Mariana makes. You might want to talk with John over there at Geeking Out Comics. Okay. Over here. Was an R&B Harley Quinn. Okay, he was in the Cheetah. Yeah. Is it Chitara. Che Chitara, yeah. Storm. Very cool. Can I see what you're working on now? Yeah. 
So what's your show? It's Comageddon TV <laughs> on YouTube. In, instead of Armageddon, it's Comageddon. Okay. So. Oh, here, let me give you one with an update. Update. <laughs> See, I'm using up my older flies, but I have a newer one with updated bar, um, whatever they call it, okay. QR code. It's this old one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>have you got going on here? Do you mind if I get you for YouTube? No, absolutely. That's cool. How's it going, mate? What's your name? Tony Steele. Tony Steele. And what you got going on here? I do art. I draw monsters and other assorted things for cash. <laughs> <laughs> and the enjoyment of creating things. <laughs> Very cool. Luckily, your style is a little bit differently different than hers. So. It is very different, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Elaine is quite elegant and does some amazing work. I love her stuff. Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> He's new for this show, so it's uh, people. It's amazing to see how many bridges are crossed when Bob Ross is right. the subject of it all because everybody remembers watching him as right. a kid. Or My dad always watched him because yeah. he's a painter. So. Yeah, yeah. So how long have you been doing this? Almost 20 years now. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, doing the whole art gig. Uh, for doing shows, I've been doing about 15 years. Just okay. going to shows and schlepping my wares and do stuff for card games, board games, books, illustrations, t-shirts, a little bit. So. Okay. Uh, do you have a website or a phone number that people can reach at to I do. commission you? I do. Uh, you can get me at Tony at Steel, S-T-E-E-L-E dash works dot com and you can send me all manner of requests for whatever sort of depraved imagery you want. Oh yes. Hey, one of my business cards. Yay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> I'll probably have uh, all this on YouTube Sweet. probably either tomorrow or by Monday. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Do you mind if I get you guys for YouTube? Yeah, go for it, man. What do you got going on here? Today we are selling merchandise for Oakwood Tattoo. Shirts, stickers, um, raffle tickets for uh, Frank is running for the uh, King of the Decatur Celebration. It's basically just a, uh, it's a charity to help raise money for the celebration. So we have shirts for him and raffle yeah. tickets. It's it's like, like you could win a whole day, like a session worth of tattooing. And uh, okay. yeah, all prizes. proceeds are going to his campaign, yep. trying to get him to be king, and otherwise just promoting a super awesome tattoo shop that you guys should check out. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. No problem. Hello. How's business going so far, John? Here at the convention? Yeah. Awesome. Horrible. Come out and buy some books. It's going fun, though. Easy tiger. Probably <laughs> <laughs> one of those tables when I like collapse. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where is me?